Uh, Ryan Dezingle, my friend, welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about actually leaving because that would have been awesome, but I like, I like you, you guys, not Bobby, but thanks for having me. Yeah, sunny Arizona. It's uh, pitch black right now, so. Hey, uh, I, I got to ask before we start, do you have an Instagram wall behind you on the in your office? All right, you're making fun of me. My wife makes money, you know? I'm <laughs> not, I'm not gonna do it. I got, is that what that is? What does it say? Zinger Golf. There you go, buddy. It's my wife, my wife, and then a couple of jerseys over there. But oh, is, my is there a Sens jersey? Like, excuse me? Is there a Sens jersey on the wall? No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There is. There is a Sens no, jersey. Show us. Is there? Yeah, oh, okay, it okay. there right. it is. Top right, <laughs> top right. That's the jersey I, I, that you get. You got to wear that one when you got traded back there, right? Yeah, I talk. I love that jersey. I talk a lot of smack, but obviously it was. Uh, you know, I'm forever grateful to Ottawa. So yeah, I loved it. And uh, that was my favorite jersey. I never got to wear it. Yeah, that was actually when I wore number ten. So it was kind of weird, but uh, yeah, I love that logo and I love that jersey. Yeah, I miss the black and the red one that the boys get to wear now too. I didn't get any of the good ones. I mean, it doesn't matter what you wear. It's not going to look great, you know, so don't worry about it. Start with me right now, six o'clock in the morning. Uh, you know what? You've Zinger, been awake as, we've been awake the same amount of time, Ryan. I don't I don't have it in me either. <laughs> I, I'm going to test how ornery you might be today. Uh, I see the Ohio State jersey behind you. Of course, you played at Ohio State. Uh, you did wear the fishbowl, which was interesting, but that's not my my issue. I'm just curious when you see a photo like this one. Um, what comes to your mind? Yeah. I lost a lot of money on that game. So, you know, <laughs> I don't really care about football, but that, what kind of, that guy didn't even show up. Penix Jr. Uh, I thought that guy was a stud and he let me down. So I knew they were going to win. I just, just needed him to cover five and a half, you know? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's a tough one. Yeah. Uh, does it, how oh, yeah, tough is it to see Michigan as national champions? Yeah, Ohio State was uh, my most fun time I've ever had in hockey, and, and I made you know so many friends to this day. And uh, just remember, like showing you that photo, just some of the stupid things we did on the ice. Like, that was against Michigan State, and I, uh, one of my old teammates was on Michigan State at the time, and that was a hat trick. And I was like throwing my hat at their bench, like just being an idiot because you could just, you could just do whatever you want. So the photo before that, I that was I scored and I went by their bench and like threw my hat into their bench. So that was just being an absolute idiot and you had no consequences. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to answer for anything in college. Yeah, exactly. So that's why you wear that fishbowl. There's no consequences. So yeah. <laughs> it's okay. So, so you, you threw the hat right in their bench. Yeah. I scored. I took a slap shot. I, I literally remember this. Like I don't have a great member. Like I told you guys before with a lot of goals that happened in hockey, but I was coming on the left side, took a slap shot, went far right. And I turned around and like right to Michigan state's bench. It was at Ohio state. And literally right to their bench, it's just like, like, Here you go, boys. <laughs> and then, yeah. And then you get in like a little scrum, but there's nothing in college. So yeah, I threw, threw my hat at their bench. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> so good. Mackenzie, um, Mackenzie McEachern told me that story uh, last year. He's on St. Louis blues now. And he remembers ripping my chain off in a scrum. And uh, I literally, I never, never forgot that he ripped my chain off in the scrum after I shot, I shot a puck after the whistle, literally after that. Right, their goalie, and and then the scrum happened, and he ripped my chain off, and that and that was him. I'm like, holy cow, that's crazy. Ten years ago, oh. so I can honestly, yeah. I can just picture five foot six as Ryan Dezingle being a cocky little arrogant thing out oh, there. Yeah. You're you're such a nail gun, huh? I beat up Kyle. <laughs> <Congrats>. <laughs> I took my visor off at say or my fishbowl off at sixteen. Never put it back on, big big, big guy. Well, yeah, I mean, when I got to Binghamton, you know, their excuse from Ottawa was, you know, Ryan doesn't play tough enough. You know, he's I'm an All-American with Johnny Goudreau and Jimmy Hayes, but somehow I'm in the AHL and they're telling me I'm not tough enough. So <laughs> next thing you know, I had an agent named Eddie Ward. and He was like, you know what? Every time Pierre walks in that door, you fight. So like Pierre would walk in, kind of let his presence be known before the game. He would walk down in our locker room and then go up to his seats. So every game, you know, I, re I remember the announcer would be like, oh, and now our top goal scorer is fighting. So I would, I would just try to scrap. <laughs> I just kind of, I would just try to scrap because they told me I wasn't tough enough, you know. Meanwhile, like Bobby said, they didn't have enough contracts for me anyway. Like there's no room. That was just their excuse. <laughs> so I started trying to fight. 
started trying to fight and my dad, I'll never forget it, texted me, hey, you're not tough. It literally, he was sick of hearing it from my mom. <laughs> my mom was crying and she was sick of me fighting. I'll never forget it. My dad's like, can you stop fighting? You're not tough. And uh, I wasn't. I was just ducking and chucking. <laughs> well, it's, so funny. It, it's so funny. It's so funny in the minors away. Everybody knows when the GM shows up, eh? Like it's and then, then it goes right through the room and the like, guys start going. So as soon as you knew, you 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 just fought. Yeah, I mean, so we had a lot of tough guys. Like we had some we had Mark Frazier, we had some very tough guys. That was when like all the guys from the NHL started trickling down to the AHL. And mm -hmm. uh so yeah, I would just try to find a guy decent my size and then just grab him whenever I could. So yeah, I, I remember just <laughs> Yeah, like I didn't know what I was so doing. So no idea. Going through the lineup, going through their lineup, you're hand picking your guy right before the game. Hey, I get this guy. Well, <laughs> then it kind of got down to like people like thought that I was willing. So then I would get like the sneak, like not the, not the like tough guys, but the middle tier guys that are my size, but can, are actually tougher than me. So then I was getting beat up a little bit, but eventually got so, up there. So, what? Who? Do you know who your first AHL fight was? First, oh man, I do not. I'm trying to think. I know, I know some of them. Like I know, I know which guys they fought, but I couldn't tell you my first one. Okay. No, I, uh, I, I, I was I, curious. I, yeah, I remember me holding my hands like super weird all the time. Like there's videos and clips. I have no. I look like I have no idea what I'm doing. Like I'm holding my hands like this. I'm squaring off. Like I'm not just grabbing guys. I'm squaring off, taking my helmet off. Like I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> uh, in when you went to Arizona, your first couple of games you played Columbus, you were fighting guys like Cam Atkinson, I think, is one. If I maybe not, uh, no, I, I fought Corrali, I fought Corrali, and then I fought uh, another guy, but yeah, he and I was thinking, why would you just played with them? Was there were you upset with them, or were you just no, Corrali? Corrali hit uh, Corrali hit Clayton Keller a little weird. Obviously, he's our best player, and he's one of my good buddies. So I just threw an uppercut from deep down south and tried to put him in a coma, but I messed up and I just fell over. <laughs> swung this thing. If you see the video, I swung this thing, missed him by a good foot, and then we both fell down. Banana peel. <laughs> and well, I, I remember like literally grabbing him, and you could see in the video, and I'm like, hey, you're going to have to fight somebody because I thought the hit was worse than it really was. It wasn't that bad, but he kind of clipped him when he was coming across the middle. And I'm like, hey, you're gonna have to fight someone, and you're pretty, like, like, I'm a pretty good customer. Like, you, I, I would take me over a lot of other guys in the bench. And he's like, yeah, you're. Right. <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. That's how you. That's how you get any fight you want, eh? Hey, yeah. I'm not that tough, man. You got me. Go ahead. You're pretty. You got a pretty good chance here. Yeah. <laughs> well, Trevor Gillies told that to one of our fighters. I think I told you guys that story. He told us that one of our fighters is like, man, you look good. I think you got a good chance. You know, I like. I like your lefts. You're telling some other guy that he's got a chance at you. That's nuts. But <laughs> Trevor Gill, I've never had a chance with me. So. Oh, Trevor Gill is one of my favorite people, man. That guy was crazy. Absolutely na nails. What do you, you're playing a lot of golf. Who do you play golf with now? <laughs> this guy. You, I love how you guys set him up. Like, you know, it's like these, these the people are watching this show have no idea how you set them up. Like, you're just trying to bait me into answering some of this stuff. So, I'm, I'm playing with my boy Phil Kessel yesterday. And uh, that's all I'm going to tell you. I, I, well, I how, really, well I really you what did you shoot? He, they're going to call me sand. If I tell you guys, everyone's going to call me a sandbagger. I'm a five handicap. I went 73 78. We played Whisper Rock and Arizona Country Club. And I made eight birdies in two days, and everyone's gonna call me a sandbagger now. So, <laughs> I, said, I didn't know you. I didn't know you learned how to putt. But. I will slap you. You're one of the worst golfers <laughs> I've ever seen. Like you're <laughs> ugly to watch. You got nine country clubs, and you still stink. I have a terrible swing. My swing oh, is terrible. Yeah, the worst. But, but I beat it around, and I had, I never said you wanted to slap me. I said you're a sandbagger. Why would I play a sandbagger? It's good. It does me no good. <laughs> Give me a donation. I need a little donation. But anyway, Phil, yeah, Phil, I've been training with Phil and and it's just shocking to me that he hasn't got a deal. And uh, the guy, the dude's actually in shape. All we do is argue. All we do is argue, work out, play golf, skate, wrestle. Like I've, I've been messing with this guy as much as I can because he's, he's hilarious. But it's shocking that the guy doesn't have a deal. 40 points on 12 minutes on a Stanley Cup team. And Iron Man streak and then doesn't get a deal. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a little. It's 
it's absolutely baffling, especially with a guy's name like that. Like, why wouldn't a team yeah. like the Ducks just sign the guy? You know, they have a they have a bunch of distractions. You know, bring him in with a big name like that. Anyone, even Ottawa. I mean, it's crazy. I, I don't know. I mean, the league is changing so much, and you know, I feel like the GMs and coaches want to control everything. And he's a guy that you know he's got a big name and a you know big personality. And who knows? I'm just I'm speculating, but it's actually crazy. I don't know what your thoughts or guys are on that. But I thought he was I thought he was Dunzinger. So he he's actually out there. Oh yeah, the we train, wow. train five days a week. We train five. He's probably like literally we're running. But yeah, two days ago we were running and do we do cardio with. Like, four or five times a week. We, he skates every, every day we have a chance. We're literally skating with U18 teams, U16 teams. And for me, I'm, you know, who knows? I, I didn't want to go to Europe and I'm probably done, but for him, 40 points last year and on a yeah. Stanley Cup winning team on 12 minutes and Ironman streak. And if you watch his look at his hockey DB like, like, DB, like Bobby's, it's, it's just insane to look at. It just looks like, it looks like figures from a, you know, like a video game. It's just crazy. So I, yeah, it's kind of baffling to me that he has, uh, yeah, that he hasn't popped any, anywhere. Especially now that the, you're kind of at the halfway point of the season, um, and you know what you're going to be. Like, why wouldn't somebody throw a million bucks at him or whatever league minimum is it? He's probably, yeah. a, he's probably a veteran league minimum, eh, Yorkie? So he'd be a million, I think. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Bob, do you know? Do you know Kess? I've known Kess since we were. Um, God, he's fourteen. We, I mean, you kind of lose touch, but you play against him and you always yeah. say hello and stuff. But. Um, yeah, we were actually supposed to live together at the U.S. program, and then I went the other way and went to Owen Sound. Um, yeah. I played World Juniors. We played Olympics, so we've always been around the World Championships. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. we're friendly enough. Yeah, great I had dude. Him, I, I I remember when he was a rookie. I was in Boston, and he was supposed to live with me too. It was the year it was the year he got sick. I couldn't believe because he was he he was he was I gotta say fat. He just had the same body when he was a kid. Like he looked like he was forty. But yeah, I don't know why. I could, know why people get caught up on that like the guy's a freak in the gym like yeah he's had, he's had you know that i he had cancer and i'm assuming I, I don't want to put words in his mouth but i'm assuming you know with your testosterone levels and stuff like that with the cancer in the area that he had it and removing yeah. one of you know whatever else it was like it just sucks that you know i don't know why that's even a problem the guy's the guy's productive every single year and the guy skates like the wind like why do you why are you try to put him in a box with somebody else you know that's why I have a lot of friends in other sports and it, and there's so much there's so much better in those sports than hockey at at you know creating what the person needs you know my one of my best friends is the pitching coach for the guardians now and he was out visiting me we we're just talking and he's like man like this the one of the best prospects had a great year last year and they're like what did you do and i literally walked in and said what do you need and the guy was like man can you just leave me alone like the last three years everyone in interjecting something about my game just can you just leave me alone and when i'm doing something wrong let me know he goes perfect i didn't talk to him all year he had the greatest year it's like mm -hmm. why why are you poking phil you know just leave him like hey, he's gonna who's, drag, you know so who's 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 winning in a race right now straight line zinger you were you're you were phil oh, i'm an absolute cheetah so i mean you don't <laughs> back you know i got the, the labrum I was playing with a torn labrum and and two herniated discs, and I'm healthy. I'm a cheetah again, you know. But <laughs> doesn't have to score goals, so I don't know. I'm not too proud about that. <laughs> uh, other questions I have for you. Uh, one is, uh, you played golf with Rob Riggle, uh, so I'm curious, uh, what's the biggest celebrity you have met? Hmm. I mean. Like extended period of time, he's probably up there. Like we did a TV show slash like little series clip with my. It was my wife, not me. They they could care less that I was there, but <laughs> it was with my wife and PXG. And yeah, this that dude's. Uh, you know, he's obviously a high high end actor and stuff. So uh, he was. It was crazy. He was like a. He was a military guy. I think he was a marine. Like his background mm -hmm. was crazy. And then he just like he's talking like a normal human. And then he gets on camera and he's just screaming like. Right, he shot him in the penis. Like, just start screaming, <laughs> and we're like, and I'm like, what? Like, that doesn't even, you know, it doesn't even make sense. How good? I mean, obviously he's an actor, so it's good, but uh, I mean, yeah, I, I'm I hang out with more athletes, you know. Like, that's where I've always I've always tried to hang out with guys like that. Guys are similar to me, so yeah, he's probably the the biggest actor that I've ever been around for sure. He's an interesting guy. I've I've. He spent a lot of time in Idaho at my my place that I used to live there um, and was starting to come up a lot when I was kind of moving on from the area. But he gave some speeches at like some military type stuff that we 
Idaho is very patriotic in that sense. So there's always something. He gave some speeches and he's one way. And then as soon as he's off the camera, he's the most or camera or microphone or whatever it is, just like a really down to earth, quieter guy, but just found a niche, I guess. Right. And that's exactly who he is on camera. But he was nothing like that off the camera. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was cool. Like we 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 did like a couples playing together series and he would he would he would like bring guys out like he brought brian Erlacher, football player he brought a couple marines he did a couple other things and we just got to play a couple holes with them and and uh you see how good they are like even my wife like there was like golf carts everywhere right with cameras everywhere and i like didn't even like what i don't know what to do with my hands like from that one <laughs> movie like i'm like sitting over here i was so awkward like if you watch the clips like but you probably wouldn't know but bobby could tell because i've been around it for so long i was just so awkward like these guys are so good. It's one take and like, he just makes things up on his head and it, like they have a script and then he just makes it up. I'm assuming he has it queued up, but yeah, these guys were awesome. I mean, it was, it was a cool experience with we the Scottsdale national, which is like Sweet. a million bucks to get in. Like the course is nuts. And uh, so the course was awesome and he was awesome. And, and yeah, so it was, it was a cool, cool day. Nice. Bobby's about to join that course next. Um, <laughs> the, uh, I'm done. I'm down <laughs> time. In 2014, you took a shot from uh, deflected from Eric Carlson into your ear. Um, and I'm just curious. I don't know if I've ever asked you about it because we saw uh, it happen to uh, Artem Zub this year. It's happened other times. I've seen, uh, Cody CC had his head almost uh, took a Dion Phaneuf shot to the head where it caused stitches. Uh, I'm curious of what that felt like for you. We were and just, it's the only time, by the way, uh, Guy Boucher called you a warrior. So yeah. the quote from that day is, I'll be honest with you guys, what a warrior, because that was not pretty. Like this is multiple lacerations stitched and restitched. I think the doctors had their fun with that one. So to see him come back was pretty impressive and actually come back and play hard. It seems like he didn't always play hard. Uh, it must have been killing him because that kind of reconstructed they kind of reconstructed a huge part of his ear and the back. It wasn't pretty. Yeah. Like I was, it's crazy. You brought that up. I was just talking about that with a couple of baseball players. We went out, you know, had a drink last night and they were talking to me like, what's the craziest thing that happened to you? And I took that video and showed them. And, uh, I think I, you know, I, I got the whole front side stitched up the whole backside and then they had to reattach it. Um, and I think his name was Dr. Chow. I don't know. Bobby could. Don Chow. Don. Yeah. Oh my goodness, this guy's the most this guy's the most amazing surgeon I've ever seen in my life. Like he did my face too when I got slashed in the face and you can't even see it anymore. Like they said it looked like mashed potatoes and I'll never forget that I probably had a concussion too. So like Guy called me a warrior. I don't even know if guys these days could even be allowed to play. Like I was face first on the ground, out cold. Wow. Yes. And I think I had 38 stitches or 40 stitches. And I remember I'm laying on the ground and Bob skates up. I literally, it's funny, it's Bobby. He's like, you good, bro? You good, bro? And he looks down he's like, oh, <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know what it looks like, right? And he's screaming like, oh. And and then I think uh, Dom- Nobody comes, freak out. Yeah. <laughs> and then Dom comes and I remember them touching it and I could feel like, yeah, I could feel like my ear moving. And it was just like- oh. Yeah, that, and then yeah, mm. I played. I they stitched me up in the first and the half of the second. I played the second and third period, and wow. that was one of the worst. Like with no tort all nothing. Like it was one of the worst pains, ever. Because like you don't, like I don't wear an earpiece. Like nobody does usually. But then they put one on. So every time I was skating or got hit, it would just rub against my ear. Yeah. Oh, Plus so the wind too. The wind when you're skating, like that was always oh, when awful. I get stitched up awful. here. Oh, it was brutal, wasn't it? Yeah, but I remember. Really I actually remember seeing that 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 one, and then the Boro off ice injury was one of the worst I had ever oh. seen. Were you on the team then, Zings? Yeah, uh, no, I don't think with so. The, actually, I think it was when he hurt his ankle or whatever. I wasn't playing or something. With Robin, me and Robin Leonard were there, and JG Pajot, and like he hit an electrical outlet and sliced his leg, and it was just. Oh. I remember mm. watching like I just you know Boro too, but. That aside, when you flipped over and I saw your ear, I was like, "Oh, okay, we're we're." <laughs> I was like, "We're in it." Things like, "Hey, we, what are we doing? You guys want to go to dinner?" I'm like, "No, my camp. You're just scare the hell out of my two year old." <laughs> hanging out with you. Yeah, I wish I wish I had the pictures from before because it said it looked like mashed potatoes, and then he literally 
made it look like yeah. there's a video on YouTube of how with the stitch what it stitched up, it looks completely normal. It just looks like a stitched up ear. And yeah, that that was like a like solid amount of pain too. You know, usually when you get hit or something happens, like I feel like you don't remember it or you know, you know, it's not that much pain. Like all my other injuries weren't that bad. That one was just painful, you know. Chowser is unbelievable, but he uh I, I was like bedside manner is not that great because he's just like here's what's happening and i remember remember how many times i had to get shot up with the finger and every time like i dreaded it i had more anxiety about getting that needle in the finger because of how bad it hurt when the when the first one went in to playing and like at that 25 minute mark he'd be like he'd just walk through and be like bobby <laughs> like just grab me on the way by i'd be oh. after it. just walking like this and then he'd be like okay so i'm today we're gonna stick it in here here and here and i'm just like <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. brutal, brutal. I but you guys very, don't very good. respect about like how hard our game is, you know, and football too. Like being on the sideline or watching these guys play, it's like, man, I wish. Sometimes I wish I played, you know, baseball or golf or, you know, you don't get enough respect for what you go through. And uh, when you when you look back and reflect on it, some of the stuff is just nuts, you know. Even it's by crazy. accident, like, Carl never apologized. Carlson owes me apology. Guy took, takes a slap shot right to my head. Like, what are the odds, you know? <laughs> Oh. Carl, now, I will you say have been there. it yeah, hit exactly. Matt Bolesky's stick. Carl would have been like, I was going in. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what Carl would have said. That's exactly what Carl would have said. The amount of times he hit me when I was standing in front of the power point, he's like, if you had just moved, it's going in. I'm like, I can't see the fuck, uh, man. I'm just moving around trying to get in somebody's lane. Don't they say it, it, adds, it adds a little speed to it if it gets deflected, right? So I'm assuming that thing came off a little hot. So oh, Yeah, that's heavy. That, I mean, I'll, that, I'll never forget the sound, man. I got lucky though. I got lucky. So if you guys watch, there's an actually a, a crazier clip. I get I took a slap shot to the head from Hoffman, and it's on YouTube too. It's actually crazier than this one. I didn't get stitches or anything, but I probably would have been paralyzed. So I'm in front of the net and I'm looking and I'm looking, and they see me. I'm like, oh no, Hoffman, like, <laughs> like he he doesn't care. Like, he doesn't care. Like, he's just letting that thing eat. Like, he just he doesn't know where that thing's going. And it's a, it's a missile, right? And I see it seamed, and I'm like, oh, no. And I just go like this. I'm like, I'm like ducking because I know I'm going to wear this or it's coming high. So I kind of try to turn my head like this. And he took a slap shot off the back of my neck. It hit my oh. top of my neck and it hit my helmet. And you can see in the video, my one and my eight on my back of my helmet, my numbers blew off in the air. So they slow mode and you could see my numbers like floating in the air. He, like, oh, they're, like, they're like an inch lower. You were probably, you know, that's off your neck, hundred miles an hour, right to the spine. Did, you know? What did Hoff say? What did Hoff say after? You get an apology? Uh, he's a nice guy. He probably apologized, but oh, yeah, sorry, no, Hoff would have Hoff would have just been like, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, <laughs> that's what you get. They 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 put me there because they want me taking that one timer. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. Hop is, Hop's a nice guy. He wouldn't have been, but yeah, he just lets that thing eat, you know. And I couldn't mm. see it. I didn't even think it got deflected. You can see that video; it's crazy. Like it, the last the last <laughs> clip of it slows it down, and the eighteen is just floating in the air. It, it's crazy. So, uh, I have a couple of questions. One is, you talk a lot about baseball. Uh, you were an all state baseball player in high school. Oh my um, goodness! <laughs> Just curious why you didn't go the baseball route. Uh, you're a handsome fella in 2010. Absolute stud in 2010. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think uh, I don't know. I think I like baseball more, if not better than, or I mean, more if not the same as as hockey. And um, I think my dad was a little too involved in my baseball career, and he knew what he was talking about too much. And he was, he was a really good baseball player. He was a stud and he went to Louisiana tech. And I think he just was too involved and I was trying to get away from this guy and do my own thing. So I think I chose hockey. I mean, he was always, he was always my coach and he was always hard on me, but obviously that's the reason I got here where I'm at now. But, you know, I think I was just trying to get away from him and do my own thing. You know, I'd go three for four. He'd be my first base coach. He'd be talking on his breath. Oh, what a terrible swing. And I'll never forget. I, <laughs> We, we we ran it like because we had a coach that was from the MLB. Like it, it was crazy how it worked out. It was in high school and he was a Christian dude. And he just like he said, I felt calling to come back to the school. 
and he was so high end for our school. It like made no sense. Like to this day, it was one of my best coaches ever, Willie Boss. And he ran everything like it was like we were in the MLB. Like when you get out at first base, you put your helmet and your stuff or your gloves and your whatever in your helmet and give it to the first base coach and somebody runs your glove out. It's just like little things, right? Little things yeah. that you wouldn't do in high school. Like guys would just run in, grab bubble gum, and it'd take a while. Like everything was to the T. So I remember my dad like talking under his breath one time. I bet it's six ten in high school. I think I literally bet six ten. Like I was, I was one of the like I was. It was insane, and he would be mad at me. I'd be three for four, and I'd roll over, and he'd be talking under his breath. And he was at first base, and I'll never forget it. I put my helmet, my gloves, and my helmet, or I put my gl uh, gloves into my helmet and went to hand it. He reached for it as he was, you know, he's talking to me under his breath, saying something. I just threw it at his feet. <laughs> he was so mad, like because he went to reach for it, and I just chucked at his feet. He was so mad, and his best friend was our head coach too, Willie. He was so mad, but they couldn't say anything, right? This is mid-game, and I thought I could get away with it. They were so mad. They, they made me run pole to poles uh, after the after the game, and they forgot about me. I ran pole to poles for two and a half hours, just two and a half hours. Because that's the field, and they literally to this day said, "Oh, we forgot." I ran for till it got dark, like two and a half hours, and just run it. And uh, it was still worth it to this day. That, <laughs> just the feeling to just give him that one. Just I love it. For all the car rides for two hours, I had to listen to his BS you know, about how. Oh. <laughs> you know, uh, my cousin, when my little cousin goes in the car rides now, I go to all his hockey games and with his with his dad, and I just go, "Can you shut up?" And I just look <laughs> over it. Just he just he doesn't want to hear it. Just just shut up, right? <laughs> like I know what he's going. Through. I don't know how to be a dad yet because I've been a dad for only nine months, but I know how to be a son. I'm like, can you shut up? <laughs> like, you don't know anything, you know. And so I try to get him going because I'm, you know, all the all the car rides with my dad. Oh, mm -hmm. Z yep. Zinger, how were how were the hockey car rides? It was only uh, baseball. Or did you... No, he was like, he was almost worse in hockey because that's why I wanted to get away and go to like Lincoln. He was almost worse in hockey because all these dumb parents, right? All these hockey parents are nuts. So he probably just fed off that. He doesn't know anything. So he's learning about hockey and trying to do what's right for me. Right. He was trying to help me out what's right. Yeah. But he's probably getting taught the wrong thing. You know, that's, a, that's what happens a lot with people. It sucks. They don't they don't have the right opportunities or don't have the information correctly. And, you know, he was probably trying to do right by me. But, oh, man, these hockey parents <laughs> suck and they always thought they knew it. And, and yeah, we'd always be getting in scraps on the way home like. He said his best speech ever. He was giving me a speech for like three hours. We drove to Wisconsin and home. And he goes, I look back. This guy's out snoring completely. I go, you think I was sleeping? <laughs> I go, you think I was sleeping? I was I was 12 years old. I was faking it. I was just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> leaning against the window. <laughs> praying he would shut up. <laughs> you know? Oh, uh, I hey, just a couple more years till your little guy gets involved, and then you got to deal with yeah. it all over. I just get it started with Chase. I go to the rink, I put a chew in, I go around the corner where there's nobody, and I am yeah. the most unapproachable person. And I, I know Wally does this too. I I make sure I'm one of the most unapproachable people at a hockey rink. I just I, I kind of have a brood face that I turn on and go stand in the corner every time. And I have a tough time doing that. Like I need to learn how to just put on a face that says, don't talk to me. You know, I, I'm over here giggling all the time. And I, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be, I don't want to be approached to, I just don't want to, I don't want to do that to my son. You know, I want him to compete. Like if he's not trying hard or whatever, I want to, you know, I just want him to compete, but I don't want to be, I want him to figure out his own life, you know, let him, yeah. let him do what he wants to do. So I hate when people down, are we'll have another training camp. You come down with me, we'll go to the rink every day for a week and nobody will talk to you. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I, I just think it's funny when dads are always like, you know, he wants to do it. He doesn't want to do it. He's four. He likes what you like. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you drink every day, my dad's like, you want to play hockey? I go, you took me to Duffer's. You guys are all drinking beers. You're laughing. You're giggling. You're having a great, how am I not going to like it? We're in the locker room with all of these dudes having a great time. Like, he's like, oh, you loved it. I go, you, you presented it to me. I love what you love. You know, That's right. so yeah. So uh, hopefully, I can, hopefully, I can direct him into golf. You know, so. I don't know. I think I'm. Uh, I'm not sure it's any better. You don't. Yeah, think? Oh God. Yeah. So golf the good thing about hard. hockey sometimes is it's surrounded by glass, so you can't always hear the parents yelling. <clears throat> like basketball, you're right on top of them. They're in a gym. You can hear everything. Or mm -hmm. golf, 
you're right there. You talk in your backswing. Yeah, um, yeah but my dad, would, my dad would go on both sides, right? He would go on, he would watch wherever we were shooting. You'd go stand right by the oh. net. Oh, this. no. I had the glass. Move your feet. Move your feet. <laughs> that's, that's why, that's why I'm so fast now, but yeah, leave me alone. Uh, the uh, best, I, the I, best, the, the, one of the best things when I was coaching. There's this kid. I won't, I won't say his name, but his dad yelled at him every friggin' game. And finally, the kid had enough. The dad's just barking at him from the stands. Finally, the kid looks up. He goes, "Will you shut the fuck up?" And the whole, <laughs> the whole rink went oh, quiet. It was, it was, was awesome. Amazing. If I would have did it, that, was... I would have got my ass kicked. But yeah, <laughs> we, we've but never known who you were. Yeah, Maybe. but uh, I, yeah, I would have got killed if I did that. <laughs> uh, just do you ever talk to I don't know who you may have as t- friends in San Jose. We talk about Ottawa struggling. San Jose's lost 12 in a row. Have you, has it, Bobby, anybody, do you guys have friends on that team that have talked about what it's like? That's tough. Uh, no, but yeah, that situation was so weird for me, right? Like I've had so like looking back at hockey, like reflecting, I've had some weird situations. Like I like I told you guys earlier, I, I get picked up by them and it's at the deadline, right? And yeah. it is like whatever, eight to ten teams have put a claim in, they're all going to playoffs and San Jose's not, right? And I get picked up by San Jose and I'm like, what like why? You know? And I play four <laughs> games or five games on the first line with Couture, play good 20 minutes. And then they wave me. I'm like, why? Did, and then I can't go to somewhere else because the deadline's passed. I go, they didn't, you know, their GM was sick at the time. And I think it was just, I don't know what they were doing. Like, I, I, I don't know. Sometimes I'm sure there's a master plan involved, but sometimes I feel like these teams and these places just don't have a plan. Like, why would you pick me up? Like, there makes zero sense. Like, we're not going to make the playoffs. We're not winning. And you got all the young guys you want to play eventually. And so we play, I played five games. They're like, okay, we're going to call the young guys up now. Thank you for your services. <laughs> Thank uh, you. For, hey, Zinger, Zinger, you're speaking to the wrong people listening about having a plan for a hockey team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trust me, I know. My dad's been saying, oh, the sets are coming up. I said, okay, Bobby and my dad, settle down, guys. You'll see. <laughs> I saw this writing on the wall. Trust me. Zinger was so, actually the first, one of the first person I because I had them in the playoffs. We did a full show on this, and I was like, "They're going to make the playoffs. This is their year." And Zing goes, "They're going to be horrendous." <laughs> I was like, <laughs> "You might not use that word, but you were like, they're not yeah. going to be good." You knew no, it. it. He was one of the first to know it. Once it's a full dumpster fire, it just needs an absolute reset. And then Bobby telling me Pierre's not going to answer my call. And then two days later, the guy gets absolute canned. You know, <laughs> <laughs> this guy's telling. <laughs> I, this guy's telling me, oh, he's not going to answer your phone call. Two days later, psh, or gone. The whole thing's getting the whole you thing's blown up. I was, I remember when you were talking about it when he used to go to bingo and like come through the room so that you guys would know he was there or yeah. whatever. Do you remember? And every coach that ever plays or GM that ever plays probably does this in Nashville. But remember when he was just he was just a scout for us, but he would always find a way on the Nashville trip, like most gem, GMs and scouts. Yeah. And he would come in and like say, "Hey, good morning, boys," whatever, and then kind of go over to the he would pull that thing open the fridge and then slide a red bull up his shirt. Like, because he hadn't slept. We were like, we know you're hung over. Okay. <laughs> you don't need to hide it. Nobody is judging you. It's natural. Yeah. Nobody's Everybody's judging hung you. over. Everybody Everybody's hung over. Like, ah, 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 kind of like walk out slow. And you're like, buddy, just take the red bull. Nobody cares. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. You know, you know, how I, you know how I feel about this guy. So don't get me started, but <laughs> I didn't want to fire you up, but I when you talked about the way you used to walk through the room, I used to think that because actually I've played with numerous people that have done that in organizations. Hold, hold on, hold on. Pierre, <laughs> Pierre used to steal a sneak a Red Bull out of the fridge. Yeah, and he, he'd be like trying to hide the fact that he was hungover, so you just you see the Red Bull like this, and then his hand would go around it. It would just go like up the big <laughs> coat sleeve, and then he'd walk like this out. You're like, just take the Red Bull, man. Just Nobody cares. Red Bull. We're not oh. judging. We'd be oh, doing it if we were you too. He's a nerd. <laughs> Get out of here, beat it. Beat it. Uh, uh, I know you got to go, and and but I you played for DJ seven more minutes. You guys, you're only paying me for 30 minutes. What's going on here? Need some overtime. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby will buy you a golf membership wherever you want. Um, yeah, he's been, yeah, he's been saying he's gonna send me wine for three years. I have nothing. <laughs> Cricket. Hey, I'm not allowed to have it in the house. It's taking it's a big endeavor to go all the way up there to get it now. <laughs> That's why you send it to me, I'll hold it for you. Yeah, yeah, I don't try. Can... Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, this week I'm sending one. I promise. All right. We'll so, see about that. 
your your thoughts on DJ Smith when I know you didn't play a lot when you got here uh, for him, but um, what did you think when you got here? Yeah, compared to uh, the other systems you may have played. Yeah, that. See, I don't. I I just don't want to. I I try to now. I try to be more. You know. Um, intentional with what I say. And I try to, yep. you know, think about what I'm saying. And like that whole situation was weird for me. Like I told you about Pierre, like one day I want to know if this guy just traded me back to, you know, to screw me. But so I got there and I had the 16, 16 day quarantine and then everything was spiraling. I told you I scored seven goals in seven games or whatever. And DJ was always good to me. Like, like he was, he was always goofing around with me. He'd always grab a coffee in the back and I was at like the end stall. And he'd walk in, he'd be like, hey, Zinger, best nine minutes of your life tonight. And like, it was kind of <laughs> funny, but I wasn't that boys with him at the same time. So I was like, yeah, <laughs> like he was trying to be good to me and nice and funny. But at the same time, I'm like, dude, I'm at the midpoint of my career here. And like, I have seven goals and seven games and I'm not getting to play. Like, you're kind of pissing me off, but kind of being funny at the same time. So no, he was always a good guy. And and you can tell I like guys that played, right? Like you just, you, you got to. He didn't get all the way up to the, you know, he didn't have the greatest career, but man, the guy was a killer. And like, so I respected him. Um, but I was just shocked how long he, like, I saw like the stat about him and the, you know, other coaches that had the longest tenure or whatever with the team. And it's yep. crazy. What did he have? Six years or five? Five, five? years. Yep. So there was like, like seven guys and all the other ones had been playoffs or cup winners, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So like, like, it's just crazy. I mean, I, I think, I was talking about coming back and coaching one day and I'm like, man, all you got to do is get into a team where they're absolutely tanking. Like, look at, look at the, look at bear in, in, in the coyotes. Like his, his record is insanely bad, but they don't have anything. You don't have anything to play for. Right. They're just kind of giving you this three year window. And then mm -hmm. kind of after that, you're kind of screwed. You might not get another job because they look and say, well, this guy stinks, but you get literally three to five years of free coaching. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know what Bear's doing out there. Like, he just gets to keep going, like, every year. And they're not trying to win. So, uh, it's just, I don't know. I think sometimes you get to a situation, and who knows? He could have been a, a best coach ever if he was in the right situation didn't have this team. But, yeah, you got – if you look at it either way, either he, he got five years and got paid, or now, you know, you look him as a head coach and say, oh, he's not great. But at the same time, there's a lot of other things around him that were the problem, you know? But I will point out Arizona, just one point out of a playoff spot at the moment. They stink. Watch this. One. <laughs> okay. You want to talk about? I, I live here. I don't want to get shot. But yeah, no, no. That's, that's the last question I have for you. Um, you uh, back in the day when when Alfie was part of the organization as a senior advisor, you used to go to him and have on ice sessions. Do you think he makes a good assistant coach? Oh yeah. Like so, I don't think he really. Had, like working with me, he was working with Zabinijad a lot too. And I think the Swedish connection, like, and I was best buddies with Zabinijad. So it was nice. I get to just kind of listen to these guys and kind of go out there with them. And I didn't get to do that many sessions with him, but man, he, he's just, it's like Bobby, like you just pick his brain and they, they're at such a high level and played at such a high level. They see everything like better than everybody else. Like when I told you Guy Boucher making me lay down on the ice about where to shoot a hockey puck, it's like, buddy, you didn't score 10 in, in triple A. Like, I'm not going to listen to you. <laughs> like Alfie, just these guys being able to pick, pick his brain. And it's, it's all dependent on the guys. Like if they want to go get information from him, he's just going to, he's just so much information. So man, I, that's the type of, in the MLB, that's what they do, right? They get guys that played and they put them in the situation like, Barry Bonds is the hitting coach. Why? Because guy's the greatest hitter ever. Like, there's there's no shock on that. Like, why wouldn't Bobby be an offensive skill coach? Like in Ottawa, you got an offensive guy that, or the coach is an offensive guy. Or in Carolina, sometimes there was an offensive guy that was a D guy. And I'm like, what are we what are we doing here? Like, how simple is that to just you know get a guy that was in that role? You know what I mean? And yep. I, don't, I feel like they they think that they can learn more things than actually know by playing. Like if you put Bobby Ryan into a situation with guys that want to score on the power play, their power play is going to go up. Like as long as they want to listen, like he knows what he's doing. You put Phil Kessel with young guys that want to listen, they're they're going to be better. So yeah, like Alfie is on Alfie. Alfie I could see him being the head coach if he wants to and killing it one day. You know, it's it all depends on what Alfie wants, right? I think he's one of those guys. Same with Justin Williams in Carolina. It's like, what do you want? You know, those guys yeah. have been around for so long and and do things so well. It's like wherever you want it to take it and where you want it to go, it's going to go there. So yeah, that's a blessing that they have Alfie now and 
it's going to help all those goal scorers a ton, you know? Yeah. Uh, yes. Well, let's hope they can get this thing turned around. Um, I was going to ask you about which engagement photo shoot was better, yours or Bobby's, but I'm going to save that for another time. Uh, but uh, it's can you believe it? Can you believe he fooled another lady? Like, this is <laughs> like, what is going on? Oh, my God. That's it. it benefits you to be wealthy because I've been telling him he's ugly and he's just fooling people. Every I just makes no sense. It makes no sense to me. All right, you're out. You're not we making the money. Right? Now I'm like warming up. Now I'm like now it's almost eight o'clock, and now I feel good. Like you kidding me? You now you're kidding beat it. Me out. Beat it. <laughs> you you told me only a half hour. That's it. See you, pal. I appreciate it. See you, boys. Thank. Thanks, Thanks Singer. Dude.